Hello students, let us start off with chapter 1, Nutrition in Plants. First of all, we need to understand the term nutrients. Nutrients means components of food. For example, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals. You are familiar with these terms. You have already studied in the first chapter of standard 6. The next term we need to understand is nutrition. It is the mode by which organisms obtain food and its utilization in the body. There are two modes of nutrition that is the autotrophic mode and the heterotrophic mode. The mode by which organisms can prepare their own food is known as autotrophic mode of nutrition and the organisms which follow this mode of nutrition are known as autotrophs. Example, all green plants and blue-green algae which is otherwise known as cyanobacteria. The mode of nutrition where organisms depend on other organisms for their nutritional needs is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition and the organisms that follow this mode is known as heterotrophs. Now, what part of the plant is known as the food factory of the plant or the kitchen of the plant? You have already studied this in class 4. Of course, it's the leaf. Now, how does the leaf prepare this food? What is the name of that process? The process is photosynthesis. Now photo means light and synthesis means preparation. Therefore, preparation of food in presence of light is known as photosynthesis. Let us now understand the definition of Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants prepare food in presence of sunlight, chlorophyll, using carbon dioxide, water and minerals. Now, we have to understand the equation properly. Carbon dioxide that is CO2 plus water H2O in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives carbohydrate. The carbohydrate is glucose C6H12O6 plus oxygen that is O2. I shall repeat. Carbon dioxide plus water in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight gives glucose and oxygen. Now children, we have to study from where these raw materials for photosynthesis is obtained. First of all, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is obtained from the atmosphere. It is taken into the plants through tiny pores called stomata that are found on the surface of leaves. Let us discuss the structure of a stomata. Stomata consists of 
a pore called stomatal pore which is guarded by bean shaped structures called the guard cells. Now what is the function of stomata? Stomata has two functions that is exchange of gases and transpiration. Now what is transpiration? Loss of excess amount of water in the form of water vapor through the stomata is known as transpiration. And the guard cells help to regulate the opening and closing of the stomatal pore. Thus now we have understood how carbon dioxide is obtained by the plants. Next, water and minerals. Water and minerals are found in the soil. Roots that are present in the soil absorb the water and minerals and take it to the leaves through long tubes known as xylem. Sun is the ultimate source of energy. This solar energy is captured by the cell organelle known as chloroplast which contain the green coloring pigment chlorophyll. Now thus utilizing sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, water and minerals, glucose is prepared. Now this glucose is stored in the form of starch. Now where is it stored? It is stored in storage organs such as fruits, seeds, roots etc. Oxygen is also emitted. Now this oxygen is given out through the stomata back into the atmosphere and this oxygen is in turn utilized by the animals for breathing. Now not only leaves other green plants, green parts, not plants, other green parts can also perform photosynthesis such as green stems, branches, etc. Then how does photosynthesis occur in desert plants? In desert plants, the leaves are reduced to spines. This is to reduce the rate of transpiration. You know that in deserts, the temperatures are very high and there is scarcity of water. Therefore, the plants need to reduce the rate of transpiration. So the function of leaf is taken up by the stem. The stem gets flattened. It is thick and green in color. Therefore, photosynthesis in desert plants is performed by the green flattened thick stem. Now what is a cell? Cell is the basic unit of life. The three important components of a cell are cytoplasm, cell membrane and nucleus. The cell membrane is the outermost covering of a cell. Within the cell membrane is present the jelly-like substance called cytoplasm and in the center is a spherical structure known as nucleus. Let us now discuss activity 1.1. .1. We need to take two potted plants and label them as A and B. Pot A, we have to keep it in sunlight and pot B in darkness. Both the plants we need to keep as such for 72 hours. After 72 hours, we have to pluck a leaf from pot A and pot B. And then 
perform the iodine test. We see that the leaf from pot A changes color and becomes blue-black. This indicates the presence of starch. That means photosynthesis has occurred. The leaf from pot B does not show any color change. This is because starch is absent. That means photosynthesis has not occurred. So what can we conclude children? The conclusion is sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Only if photosynthesis happens, starch is produced. Children, have you seen colored leaves or variegated leaves? Variegated leaves means leaves with many colors. You have seen so many leaves that are spotted white, yellow, red, brown, etc. You cannot see the green color prominently there. Do you think these plants can perform photosynthesis? Of course. Photosynthesis occurs in these plants. The only thing is that these pigments which are more prominent mask chlorophyll. And because chlorophyll is present, they can perform photosynthesis. Then, what are algae? Often, you might have noticed whenever you have seen a pond or a puddle of stagnant water, you might have seen that uh, water is green in color. What is this green colored substance? They are slimy green patches. These slimy green patches that are found in stagnant water or ponds etc. are known as algae. And since they are green in color, they are also able to perform photosynthesis. With that, we have come to end of today's session. Thank you.